Today we're making fermented carrot sticks. These are a favorite in my family. Always have them in the fridge. First thing we're going to do is prepare the brine. You can find the full recipe on growingwildroots.com. I have three cups of filtered water. You can also leave the water sitting on your counter overnight or boil it and let it come back down to room temperature. The reason you need filtered water is because the chlorine or some of the other chemicals in tap water will hurt the bacteria that does the lacto fermenting that you need for this. To my three cups, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of non-additive salt. You need non-additive salt for the same reason, to help with the bacteria growth in your ferment. I have a pickling salt here. You can use a sea salt, Celtic salt, or a kosher salt. Just something that doesn't have the anti-caking agent as well as no iodine. This doesn't need to be perfectly dissolved into the water. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a stir to get it started. And we'll set that to the side. Now I have just over two pounds of carrots here that I've already washed and topped. If your peels are nice uh, and organic, you can leave them on as long as they're clean. I'm going to peel these here quickly. <clears throat> Done with the carrots. I'm gonna put the peels in my bucket for our rabbit. Now you're also going to want to prepare about four garlic cloves. For your quart jar, we're making a quart jar today of fermented carrot sticks. <laughs> These are really big cloves. Whoa, check that out. So I've got five cloves here. They're quite large, but I'm going to go ahead and prep all of these. Just peeling off the skin. And the garlic is not just for flavor. You can eat those garlic pieces once they're fermented, so you'll have a nice fermented pickled garlic snack as well. And my kids love these lacto-fermented carrot sticks, especially my one-year-old. All right, garlic all cleaned. Here I have my quart jar. I'm gonna get that ready. And I like to use a few peppercorns in with my ferment, so I'll throw a few in to start. I'm gonna start with some garlic. And you just want to intersperse garlic into um, the jar for your fermented carrots. Now you can pack those really neatly, um, vertically, and fit more carrots in if you'd like. Doing it sideways is a good way to do that. Just sliding them right in as we go. It's really not very particular. The, the more that you can fit in, uh, the less brine and the more sort of mass you'll get in fermented carrots. This is a good way to preserve carrots. These ones are near the end of their life. They're getting really sprouty and kind of old. Um, they've been stored in our cool space. So by processing them like this, they'll keep almost indefinitely in the fridge. Now in regards to um, sanitizing the jar, you can. I often just wash mine with hot water and soap um, and that gets it nice and clean. Make sure all the soap is rinsed out really well before you start a ferment. Sometimes I will put some water in the bottom of the jar and microwave it for two minutes and that gets it nice and hot and um, ready for preserving in. You can also put it through a cycle in the dishwasher. You don't have to worry too much about sterilizing it. Um, just making sure that it's really clean and ready to go is perfect for doing a ferment. I'm not gonna put any more big long carrot sticks in here because as you can see, we wanna keep some head space. As it ferments, it might bubble a little bit and I'm also gonna use a weight. So we want to make sure we have room for that. Just push them in so they're nice and, and kind of firmly gathered. Remembering to add garlic as you go. You could add some pieces of ginger or whatever flavor that you particularly like with carrot sticks, um, some chilies, peppers. I'm gonna put another half a carrot in there, I think. Okay, so you can take a look at this jar. 
We've got it packed um, nice, fairly tight with some garlic, some peppercorns, and that's ready for us to add in some spices. So I like to use one tablespoon of regular or smoked paprika. And you can just put that right on top of your carrots. And then the other flavor that I like to add in is one tablespoon you, spoon of cumin seeds. You do not have to crush the cumin seeds, um, but I like to do that and bring out a little more of the flavor. So one tablespoon of cumin seeds. If you have cumin that is already ground, pre-ground cumin, um, you'll want to use two tablespoons and just add it along with the paprika. Just giving those cumin seeds a little bit of a crush here in my mortar pestle. I really like this mortar and pestle. I'll put a link to it below. We're just gonna pop those on top right there with the paprika. We have our vegetables in here, our spices, and we are ready to top this off with the brine. We have this here that we prepared at the beginning. Give it a quick mix to integrate the salt. And then we're gonna just top off our quart jar of fermented carrot sticks. Now we just want enough to submerge the carrots. And then this isn't strictly necessary, but I like to add some apple cider vinegar. This will help to raise the acidity at the start for your ferment and also can give it a kind of a little jump start or a little boost. If you have um, an apple cider vinegar, it says with the mother, that means that it should be naturally fermented. You want unpasteurized, that's also a good sign. So I have this one here and I'm going to pop in three tablespoons. You can just watch your ferment a little closer near the beginning and skip the vinegar altogether. Another option is to use some brine from a ferment that you already have going. So the first time that I started these fermented carrots this year, I used a couple tablespoons of brine from a sauerkraut that I already had that was actively fermenting. And that made a really nice ferment. Once you have these carrots on the go, you can just continue to reuse the brine. Um, so instead of making a new batch every time, and instead of even adding in all the spices, you can just pack in the carrots and some garlic and pour in your old fermented brine and it'll move a little faster that way. We're gonna test this one after about a week, see what we think of the flavor of it. Depending on the temperature uh, in your kitchen or the place that you're fermenting it, that will affect the speed at which your fermentation goes. I have here my little glass weight. I love these for fermenting. They fit really nicely into a wide mouth jar. I specifically wanted ones that were glass and had a little handle here that I can easily put it in and out of the ferment. Um, if you like this one as well, I'll put a link below in the description and you can check those out for yourself. We're just gonna pop that down. We want to make sure the carrots are submerged and in this case, I'm gonna put just a little bit of brine here. Now my fermented carrot sticks are done. They're ready to go onto the shelf. Um, you can top it with a piece of paper towel or a dishcloth tea towel, something like that that's secured with an elastic band. You can also use a pickle pipe or an airlock. Uh, those are really great things to use for fermenting if you have them. I just use this glass lid. It's not airtight and um, keeps my ferment clean. If you do use an airtight lid, like a normal canning lid and a ring or something like that, you'll need to make sure to open that at least daily um, to release some of the pressure built up. I'll still check this every couple days just to look at it. Sometimes with this particular ferment, you will get a cam yeast on the top. That's um, a small white yeast that just collects out of the air. It's harmless and it's fine for your ferment. I will include a picture on the slide here so you can see what cam yeast looks like. I have thrown out ferments before when I was getting started because it had cam yeast building up and I thought it was mold. So that's an easy mistake to make, but you don't need to throw out an entire ferment for that reason. If you see true mold contaminating the whole jar, then you're gonna want to throw out that ferment and start again. Thank you for watching. I'm gonna go put this on my shelf so that I'll be ready to enjoy fermented carrot sticks in a week or so. So there we go. I have a jar here of carrot sticks ready to go on my shelf and in a week or so, we can enjoy the goodness of fermented carrot sticks. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.